Now welcome back to the top down shooter tutorial. I think we're in about part seven. And in this video, we're gonna look at creating the shell casing and the tracer fire. Uh, in the next video, we'll look at adding the actual code to create those and bring them into the game. Um, but essentially what we're gonna be creating is this. So our player moves around when we hold down the button, it fires and you can see that it's dropping these shell casings on the ground. Um, the longer we hold the button down, the more it shakes and we get all these shell casings flying everywhere. Uh, loads of fun. Then when I let go, these are all rigid bodies. I can walk through them and uh, they look pretty good and they, they stay there. So <laughs> they don't actually affect the frame rate. They're so low poly um, that it looks pretty good. Now what I would like to add later, and I'm still working that out, is like a spark effect where it hits the wall, possibly a decal, um, so it actually marks the wall on there. That would be quite cool if we could do that. Um, but I'm just working on figuring this out. I have made a little test level where there's just four rooms and I can move between each one. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing. All right, so what I've done in Blender is create a very low poly model. Um, it is just a cube, kind of extruded and resized, and I've got a, a slightly different material at this end, just so it looks a little bit different in-game. Um, and I've saved that into my Godot folder, into game models. Um, that is called uh, bulletcasing.gltf. Um, and I have made a bullet case scene. So I'll go through how I made it. Um, first of all, I added in a rigid body as the root node. So I added a rigid body and called it bullet case. Now I've already done this video several times, but it ended up blowing up to like 40 minutes. So um, I decided I'm gonna do it again, but I won't remake everything. Um, this bullet case is just a rigid body, but the rigid body has a uh, the bullet casing model. So we can just drag that GLTF file straight into here. And you can see I can delete, so I can delete this and I can drag bulletcasing.gltf in there. It comes in all good. I've added a visibility notifier. This will tell us when it's outside the visible bounds of the camera and we can make it trigger up here. So uh, camera uh, exited or when it's e exited the screen, um, which is camera exited is probably more what we want. So when we can't see it on camera anymore, we could actually delete it. So that's a really cool little thing there. And then I've got the collision shape, of course. The collision shape is uh, a box shape and it is the same size as that, roughly. I mean, this is so small that it doesn't matter. All we want is for it to bounce on the ground. Um, that's it. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to click on this and add a script. Now I've already added the script. It's a very simple script. Um, I'll click on it to edit it. All it does is in the func ready, so in the ready function, we're gonna add to group called ignore. Um, the reason for that is when we add the tracer fire, we want it to move and when it hits another rigid body, uh, we want it to uh, destroy itself, except at the same time, the bullet is gonna be created, so they're gonna be in the same location and they're going to register um, as, a, as a function. So we can say, ignore this, ignore uh, the collisions with the um, bullet casing, and you'll see how that works in a minute. So over to the tracer fire model. This one, I'll go into 3D. The script for that is a little bit longer. But once again, I didn't make a blender model for this, okay? It is a rigid body here. It has a collision shape, and the collision shape is box shape. And I've made that quite long. You can see I've made that quite long. Made it roughly the same size as the mesh instance. So I've added a mesh instance to this. And over here, I'm just gonna add this mesh instance again so you can see how it works. Um, add, I'm pretty sure I have added a mesh instance before in a previous video, but mesh instance. And then we've gotta select the mesh. So I'm gonna select the new cube mesh. It gets pretty big to start with, but I can scale it down. I don't get the little dots on it like I do on this here. Instead, I can use the scale tool here and it's like scaling something in Blender. Uh, we'll move it uh, that way and I am going to scale it that way and scale it in there. I actually want this to be quite small, so smaller than what I had it. The rigid body doesn't matter, though it can be a little bit bigger. And 
you'll see these three things, the trace of fire, the origin for that is at the origin. That is where it is. Okay, if I look at the transform for that, zero, 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 that's where it is located. But these three things here, I've pulled them along the negative X axis. You can see here, negative 1.5. I've just pulled them along just visually, I guess. I've just kind of guessed. Uh, because what's going to happen is we want it to spawn from the, from the gun with this part being the origin here. We don't want it like half of this to spawn in the gun and then it kind of show out the back of the player. Um, so we want it to be here. But the origin of that is there. And once again, we've got the visibility notifier. Now we're going to add a script to this. And you can, you can see my script. I'm going to go through the script with you. You'll be able to see it. Um, but let's load this script up. You'll notice that I've also used a signal. So it's probably best that you don't just copy exactly what I've got here um, because it's not going to uh, work for you without those signals. So let's go ahead. And first thing, I'm just going to delete these generic comments that come in. First thing we're going to do is export, export, export export variable bullet speed equals 5,000. If you don't remember what export does, it means it puts it into here. And you'll note that I've actually changed it from the default up to 20,000. I must have been trialing it uh, previously. So let's go back into that script. Then when it's ready, add to group ignore. The reason for that is there might be multiple of these that collide with each other and we don't want them to collide with one another. We want them to um, not collide with one another and uh, just to kind of ignore any collisions with itself. Not itself, but other instances of it. Now I'm gonna hide some of these things and I'll bring them up bit by bit. So the physics process, we're gonna add a central force to it. Okay, so this central force is gonna get, uh, what this is going to do, you can hold control and actually click on these things and it brings it up adds a constant directional force without affecting rotation. Now, of course, we don't want this trace of fire to rotate or anything. All we wanna do is um, add a force to it. And we're gonna add it to the center of it. So it means it's not gonna be affected by rotation. It's not going to, um, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, can I bring up paint? Say if this is our thing here, and we're gonna add a central force along the, let's pretend this is the Z axis. We're gonna add a central force along there from the center this way, so going this way. However, if we were to add a force here, going that way, uh, what it's gonna do is it's going to add that force there, but it's gonna kind of careen off this way. Um, so we can do different things with forces, especially if you're doing fairly realistic simulations of stuff, but we're not. We just want it to go in a single direction. So let's go ahead and add a central force. And the central force, the position that we're going to do is going to be get the global transform. So where it currently is, dot basis dot Z times negative bullet speed times delta. And that's just going to slow it down a little bit so it doesn't fly off the screen uh, at 20,000 units. Uh, but it will go really fast. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to Tracer Fire. And we're going to go up to Node. And I have got Body Shape Entered. Okay. Um, and I have... Oh yeah, you double click that. And um, connect it to a script which is going to be the tracer fire here so when you do that you can double click it and you can click connect down the bottom i don't want to do it with that one i've already done it here so then i go into here body shape entered and in here um, you don't need to print the body name i was just doing that for testing but if you're not sure if things aren't working you can print out the body dot name and see see what it says and now i've got this little bit of script here if not body dot name equals player and not body dot is in group ignore, then we're going to delete it. But if it collides with the player object or one of the things in the ignore bit, then we're just not going to do anything. Okay, we're just going to essentially it's just going to forget that it, this actually happened. But this Q free will delete uh, the node scene from the tree. Okay, this is a tree up here and it will be in this level and it will add it to that. Uh, we'll do that in the next video and it will delete it from that. That's what Q3 does. 
it removes it from the, the queue of the tree. The queue is this here, top to bottom. Um, and that's it. Now, if you run your game now, nothing will happen because we haven't actually written the code to add this in, but it will work. Okay, it will work in the next video. So in the next video, we're gonna add the code in to uh, make it so that the player can shoot.